Hello Minecrafters, this is episode 15, and uh, today's life lesson, um, don't dwell on past mistakes, learn from your mistakes, move on, and improve. This thing here is a past mistake. It was good, but it doesn't do exactly what I wanted to do. And so we are going to move on. Um, the best way I know how to. Alright. Good riddance. So it wasn't a total waste, I'm not going to be using this anymore, but it did teach me a lot, and we did get a lot of resources building it. But this is the future. This is our second mob system. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to show you what this does. Get rid of all the guys. So this thing has four water tubes. Um, this one is for the tall mobs. Oh wow, we are lucky today. This one is for spiders and spider jockeys. So one thing we learned from our last mob trap is uh, mobs do not collide with each other when they are swimming up, which means with our old one, I had it a, the mob elevator a 3x3 three three area because I thought they were going to get in each other's way. But apparently they do not at all. And you can actually fit over 100 guys in a two-box two, two base. So there's no point making a 3x3 three three elevator at all. So over here is a one block elevator for the tall mobs, and over here is a 2x2 two two elevator for the spiders. And what happens is the water pushes them into this area, they swim up, and then they drown. And their drops fall in below. They move it into the water streams. And this is actually a mob junction too. So I said I was going to be working on my uh, storage room and I got a little bit sidetracked this is going to be the centerpiece of our storage room and there's going to be chests all around here so what these levers do is they control doors in our vertical junction here so if this door is closed, the mobs can't go the mobs can't enter this area here. And somebody just snuck up on me. Darn it. I think that's all that broke. Okay. 
So when this door is closed, the mobs are forced to swim up. And I'm going to have a second story here. And at the second story, I'm going to have a sorting mechanism to sort the different types of mobs. And I'm also going to have a mechanism to uh, put them into minecarts if I want and ship them off to other areas. But I won't start that until I finish the first uh, story of our storage room here. So to clarify, um, this water tube here is a elevator for the spiders. If this door is open, they enter this left uh, tube here. This is the killing chamber for the spiders. This is the elevator for the tall mobs. And if the door is open, they will enter the killing chamber for the tall mobs. And the elevators are going to go up to a second story. And I am going to show you down below. And we're doing this on peaceful. I'm making the exception because otherwise I'm definitely going to die. De I'm definitely going to die down here. Actually, let's keep it on easy just for now. This is the, the spawning grounds. I think I have seven pads here now. This is like a little uh, lookout area. Actually, I'll explain this first. Go back to peaceful. And we'll get some lights on down here. With my old elevator, I had three streams joining together, like this one, this one, and this one, and then the elevator was up here and it would go up to the surface. That was kind of a bad way of doing it. So instead, it goes up into this little area here, and this is the tall mob spider separator mechanism. The way this works is all the mobs get pushed into here. This little stream keeps uh, mobs from being stuck in this area here. They're forced to go to the left. And uh, this part here is too high. This part is too wide. So spiders can fit here. Tall mobs can fit here. They enter the thing, and what happens is the tall mobs, they, uh, they pass right through here. So all the water is going straight, and uh, this, this block of water is on top of a pressure plate, and the sign keeps it from backflowing. So it pushes the mob through. And then the tall mob goes up the elevator. This is the junction. And these are all source blocks, so the mobs go up very fast. And this is kind of like the cork I have on until I build the second story. And you'll notice there's an angled uh, water stream here. That is so that they don't get stuck on this door hinge. And there's a step here because sometimes they were getting stuck in this door area and they weren't moving. So even if that happens, if another mob comes up, it'll push them onto the stair 
and then they'll get going again. Up into the killing chamber here. So there's some pretty fancy uh, water work here. I got it just the way I like it. Took a lot of tweaking. And I'll, I might make a tutorial on how to do it later once I get this all finished. Because it's pretty hard to see exactly how it works once it's all finished like this. So this, these blocks here prevent the tall mobs from entering the spider uh, switching area. And what happens with the spiders is uh, they come in through here and then they hit this Sorry guys, I keep getting interrupted here. So, like I was saying, um, what was I saying? So yeah, this, the spiders, they go in through there. You can probably see it better on this side. Go in through here and then they hit this, uh, wall here. There's only a one block wide gap there so only the tall mobs can get through. But the spiders, they hit this wall and then there's a stream of water that goes this way and then around the bend into the elevator here. So they're forced to go this way, the spiders. And they get separated that way. And then this elevator here uh, I'm using signs for it, and what it is is it's a source block here of water, and diagonally there's another source block, and it keeps alternating all the way up so that there's air pockets and they don't drown on their way up. And they, like the other mobs, they have a door here. Oof. Crazy water currents in here. Going all different directions. So there's a source block of water here. I think. Yeah, here. And it pushes the spiders... Uh, this into this area here. Oh yeah, this is what I did. You can't really see it here, but there's a source block of water here going diagonally, and then the stream comes this way, and the other stream goes that way. And what that does is it pushes spiders towards this corner, and so they don't run into this door hinge. Otherwise they'll get stuck and just go up. And then this water stream pushes them in. And there's three source blocks here. With a hollow sign spot here. So that this stream doesn't merge into the still water. Then above here, there are two source blocks only, and this is where they drown. And the stream is going uh, to my left here. And the reason for that is because sometimes when the spiders were dying, their drops were landing on this pad here. And the stream of water going this way ensures that the drops get pushed this way and they don't land on here and get lost forever. And so with our stream down here, there's a source block here, pushes them in, and the drops come go out there. As far as I can tell, it's 100% efficient, and so is the other one. Mm -hmm. 
and it's all all s source water blocks so they climb fast up the elevator then in my little viewing area here I have half blocks and I'm going to expand it here half blocks or so that nothing spawns in this safe area uh, let's switch to easy and hopefully we can see some guys going through here So another issue I had with my old mob trap. Oh, here comes some skeletons. Get pushed over and pushed through there. There's no uh, air spaces there, so they just keep going straight. The odd time, a guy will get stuck over here. Not really a big issue because as soon as someone else comes along, he gets pushed into this water. So it works pretty good. I'm quite happy with it. It's a huge improvement over the last one. I'm hoping a spider will come through so I can show you what happens. <laughs> creeper, creeper. Okay, there's some spiders there. <laughs> This is the only exception for peaceful, is when I'm working down here. Uh, I'm going to show you these spawning sections. So again, I'm using a 16 by 16 uh, pattern. And it's uh, each of these pads is 14 by 14, and then there's uh, water on the outside. Get some light in here. Okay, and another thing I was doing in my old. Uh, my old mob trap I had three wide streams, we're only using two now. They seem to work just as well, if not better. And also I've tried uh, creating a steady stream with no gaps, and I've found uh, doing that actually makes it worse. Because what happens is mobs go into this uh, thing here even though they keep going straight they sometimes hop up onto these pads kinda like this and then they get out of the stream so these things weren't working too well and I even tried uh, covering them like that but then what happens is they kinda get stuck getting into these things and also uh, decreases the amount of area where they can fall down into the streams so I got rid of doing it this way and there's about seven of these pads I really hate digging these things out so from now on 
I'm probably just going to use TNT to expand this. TNT mining is a lot of fun. Basically all you gotta do is put it in a hole like this and it blows out a 3x3x3 three by three by three area. And you just hit it and run. And it blows out a perfect 3x3x3 three by three by three area. So to make one of these pads you're going to need about 15 TNT and in total I've, I've got 15 on me and probably another 20 in, uh, in the base. If you're worried about uh, like if I had glass blocks over here the TNT blowing up would probably blow up the glass blocks too. So one thing you can do is uh, hit it and then cover it up. then uh, less stuff will get wrecked near the TNT. You'll notice the torch didn't blow up. And if that's too challenging for you, another thing you can do, I think, I've never tried this before, is cover it up if you got a button with you. I think you can place the button and when the, then you just press the button here. Yeah, it doesn't destroy the button, so you just can keep reusing the same button if you want to do it a little safer. So, very fun way to go mining. Very fast way. And uh, I think that's all I wanted to show you this episode. Maybe one more thing. So I'm going to keep expanding this and then the, the mob trap will work faster. Oh yeah, you'll notice with my corners now, before I had uh, pressure plates at every corner. With this one now, all the streams uh, keep going around the corners. And then I have the pressure plates uh, two blocks away from that edge, one, two pressure plates and then this is eight long and the same thing over here so two blocks from this edge one two pressure plates and from this same thing and that seems to work very good if you're using this uh, 16 by 16 pattern. And I ran into the Eats Road over there, so I stopped building over there. So we're running out of time. There's this one last thing I wanted to talk about. This was an idea I had for the storage room and I uh, ripped it out because I thought of better ways of doing it. It was for the dispensers. The other thing I wanted to tell you about is I plan on hooking up a wooden pressure plate here. And uh, so when, when the items come to the pressure plate, it's going to light up an indicator light to show that there's items here. When there's no items here, the light will be off. And I also want to hook up a timer to it so that after about four and a half minutes to five minutes, the light is going to start flashing on and off quickly to indicate that the items are about to uh, disappear and that I should pick them up. So I'm going to need to use a about a four and a half minute timer to do that and 
problem is most people use redstone to do that type of thing and if I was to use redstone it's going to be huge so I'm going to have to invent another way of doing it and I plan on using uh, boats, water, and slow sand. So next episode I think we're going to go into the nether to find some slow sand. So until then, thanks for watching and if you want me to make a tutorial of this just keep uh, keep reminding me and I'll probably eventually do it.